Well, hello everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a review of Ubuntu 24.04, or well, Ubuntu Mate 24.04. And before I start this review off, I'd like to point out a comment that a Red Hat slash free desktop developer made, or somebody who says that they're a GNOME Foundation member on Fediverse or Mastodon. This individual said that code quality does not matter as much for open source projects as much as the people do. Really? Let's find out if that's true or not by doing a review of Ubuntu Mate 24.04. Now, for the longest time, Ubuntu has been known as the it just works of Linux distributions. It's designed so that you can take somebody who struggles with the computer at work and get them on Linux very easily. In fact, I did this at one of my old jobs. I had a USB drive with Ubuntu 24.04 on it, or well, 2204, because that was the version at the time, not 2404. But 24.04 is the newest version, and 2204 was great because, you know, you could have a USB drive with 22.04 and you could load it on somebody's computer and they didn't even have to know anything about Linux and it would just work and the same went with 2004 with 1804 with 1604 you know it worked it just worked it was a great operating system unfortunately I'm not sure I can say the same about the Ubuntu Mate 24.04 beta it comes out in like a week or two but this isn't good, okay? Let me show you why. So, let's turn the system on and let's get into BIOS and install it. So, power, mash the few keys. One of these will work, I bet. Okay, we got one of the keys to work. So, we're going to go to F7 and we're going to go to save and exit and we're going to go do a boot override for our USB. Okay, try or install Ubuntu Mate. And it's going to boot. And this takes a while because of these flash drives and how this is a 4 gig image, by the way. This isn't like a 2 gig image like previous Ubuntu versions were. This is a big, massive 4 gig image for Linux. Kind of bloated, if you ask me, these days when you consider how a Debian netboot image is like. 700 megs these days but we'll let it do its magic and boot because this is a live image this isn't just an app boot image this is a full-on live image so we're gonna let this thing boot and we're gonna see what it does all right so all I've done is I've connected Wi-Fi so I don't show my SSID in the video and now we're at the language selection screen okay we've got accessibility in Ubuntu Mate being the first thing we see because, you know, you know, these days accessibility is the really hot topic. I mean, just look at the alt text cabal on Blue Sky and the Fediverse. So let's go to next. Keyboard layout. We're going to skip the Wi-Fi part so you don't see my SSIDs. We're going to install Ubuntu Mate. Let's install Ubuntu Mate on this system. Interactive, okay. This should be just like the old installer, right? Let's find out. Ubuntu Mate Desktop. We're going to install the third-party software, of course. Let's install alongside Windows Boot Manager. Okay. Well, it tells us that BitLocker is enabled, that you need to use Windows to create free space. Let's see how much free space we really have. Let's go into a Gparted. Let's see how little free space we really have. Well, we've got 300, nearly 300 gigs of free space, dude. And it's telling us we can't do this. This is already a good start. This is a quality operating system installer right there. Let's go back. Let's go to manual installation. Okay, well, we can just do the good old, you know, create partitions. We've done that so many times on other operating systems. Let's just create a partition. And mount point is slash. Let's click OK. Let's give ourselves a 
a little bit of 4 gig swap just in case. Okay, they should just work right. And now it wants us to create an account, which we'll do. And right here wants to select the time zone and do the usual. So, you know, me might be thinking, we're good. Let's see if we actually are and if it installs this time. So, while it installs, let's crack open a nice Mountain Dew. Let's crack open a nice Mountain Dew Baja Blast. And let's drink this up while it installs. Now, right here, if you click this little command icon, you can actually go from the flashy thing that tells you about how great Ubuntu is to seeing what it's actually doing. And you can see that the Ubuntu installer is a very complex Rube Goldberg machine. It's not like, uh, you know, Void Linux where it just copies your Squash FS or whatever to the hard disk. And then it decides to, um, you know, assign the password to it and all. This is not like that. This has this whole scripted Rube Goldberg machine of an installer. I mean, Ubuntu kind of always has had that. If we go to HTOP, you know, we can see that we've got, uh, you know, it's doing an rsync operation. Don't even know what it's doing. It's got this rsync stuff. I still remember when old versions would have, like, Perl and... You know Python and all that fun stuff. That those were fun, and we got Snap too because why not? Ubuntu loves Snap, and it's doing all this Rube Goldberg stuff to install an operating system. Let's see if it works. All right, and so guess what? Something went wrong. Let's try to see what went wrong. Oh, we don't have a we don't have a scroll bar here. We can't select it and drag it. Well, we can, and it's just very slow. We don't have a scroll bar here. And we also can't really use page up and down or, uh, or down arrow keys that well. I mean, you can use, like, end and that, but it doesn't scroll page by page. You have to select it and then drag it. And, you know, look at this very fine UI. Look how nice this is. Look how easy to use and very easy it is to see what our error message is. Um, you can scroll and it takes a while to scroll. Nice. Let's see where the error is. It's also in this tiny window while in the other window earlier it's in this big giant area. Wow, look at this. Look at this amazing UI. And you know, this is despite Linux developers going on, like, this isn't a specific Ubuntu developer, but while I'm scrolling down to find this issue, you know, you got Linux developers on Fetty talking about how, you know, they they don't care about the code quality. They're they're more worried about about the uh, gain stalkers and and you know you know yeah they they post dr internet drama about about uh about uh what is it the FDO free desktop dot org and stuff. Look at all this Linux development going on right here look at all this Linux development you look f free desktop you get all this internet drama and you know all this low quality software and this is what you get on Linux especially Ubuntu warning cannot set EFI variable boot and it just absolute panics it just throws error messages for some bizarre reason I don't even know what it's doing or how to fix it it just says something went wrong. Try restarting your computer. Like this is this is Windows 11 tier on Linux. So while you're complaining about Windows, you know the installer just works on Windows. I've never had an issue with the Windows installer. Not even on the very jank Windows 11. No, the installer just works on Windows 11. This you get a long thing of code mess next to 
something went wrong, like it's Windows 11. Basically, Microsoft always wins. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Ballmer! Struggling with Linux? Pop that Windows on, baby. Down a Windows install and burn to a CD or something. And it'll just work. Especially with your Intel uh, Alder Lake like this is. Alright, let's restart this. Look at this. It's just twiddling its thumbs to restart the damn machine. I love Linux. I love Linux so much it's unreal. Let's hit restart. Let's hit restart. I have four words for you. Look at this. Installing Ubuntu and it's twiddling its thumbs and crying. Like somebody who logged into uh, the Mastodon network as they say. That's, that's what this feels like. Let's reboot anyway. Let's reboot anyway. Let's see what this thing does. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, the thing with Microsoft and Windows is... I don't have to hear about internet drama with the developers of it. Because they're being like, you know, the, the manager goes up to him and says, Hey buddy, write the code. With this, you get stuff like this. And now it decides to finally reboot. Okay, let's see if we can boot into this because it happened at the very end. You know, you're thinking, you know, okay, well, I've had this issue before, you know. Usually I can just get into EFI, UFI, and have Grub update itself there. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's go to Ubuntu. We see Ubuntu there. What does it do? Okay, that's promising. We've got Grub. It found Windows. Let's see what it does. Okay, we've got, I think, a login screen. Well, would you look at that? Guest session, local host, local domain. It didn't even apply the settings to the install because the installer just crapped itself. Oh, sorry, uh, we can't do this. Sorry, pal. Uh, we're just going to leave it as local host, local domain, guest session. And, uh, look at this. Look at this. Temporary guest session. <laughs> what an amazing installer. Our user, our user is literally guest doi ut4 or whatever. Uh, let's just go to uname.a. Hey, at least we're in Ubuntu, uh, 24.04. What an amazing operating system. Let's just reboot. We don't even have that. Let's just reboot this thing. Let's just reboot it. Forget it. Let's reboot it. <sighs> oh, guess what's loading? The good old Windows 11. You know, it's very telling that as angry as people get about Windows 11, it just works compared to an operating system that doesn't install, people. And there you have it. There you have it. Ubuntu 24.04 review. I hate the state of Linux. I hate the direction it's going in. I love how it's just the Linux development has just evolved into the Jerry Springer show of software while Windows just works. And it's like Linux, you know, you know, usually 
like this drama I wouldn't even care about or pay attention to if it wasn't accompanied by a, a collective decline in the code of Linux, which we're seeing right now. I've never had a Ubuntu do this to me. I've never had one do this to me. Basically, Microsoft always wins, buddy. Microsoft always does. Oh, sure. Uh, I see people talk about using Linux on their Steam Deck, but guess what? They're not actually using it, like, they're only using it on their Steam Deck and then on their main PC. Well, they just prefer Windows. And sometimes they even install Windows on their Steam Deck just to play Fortnite. So, there you have it. Microsoft always wins. You can sneed, you can cope, but Microsoft always wins. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.